Hey, everybody, welcome to the podcast. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're watching and or listening on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. Hit that little bell symbol because then it'll tell you when a new episode comes out. And if you're listening on a podcast platform, please subscribe to the show. It tells the computer that this show is important to somebody and they'll show it to more people. And isn't that what we're trying to do? Share great ideas, philosophies for a better way of living, for a better life. Each and every day, we're getting better and better in every way. And today, I want to talk about habit number five. Habit number five from Stephen Covey's best-selling book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. If you haven't gotten the book, please get it. I got it many years ago. Mr. Covey has passed on now, but his book, I read, I've read. i read five or six times. Five or six times. And it's an easy read. And if you start putting these habits into play, it'll start changing your life from day one. And it's seven habits. It's not 15, 20, 21. It's seven basic habits. And today we're just going to talk about Habit number five, because as soon as I started putting this into place, it it affected me from day one, started changing my life immediately because I automatically became a better communicator. And habit number five is seek first to understand and then be understood. Usually in a conversation, we start the opposite way. We want to be understood before we try to understand the other party. So, habit number five, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Generally, we're always, even when we're listening, generally, all of us are figuring out what we're going to be saying when we get our chance to speak. So, in the entire process of listening, we are formulating what we're going to say. And so, and it's hard not to do that because we think of things during the other person's conversation that we don't want to forget, that we want to keep in mind so that we get our chance to speak. We won't forget that and we can say what we thought about saying halfway through when we were listening. And so we have to get out of the habit of doing that and we have to be intentional in our listening. We've got to be intentional in our listening. I took some notes here. See, if we listen with the sole intention of hearing, if our sole purpose is to listen to what the other person is saying, it tells the other person that we're actively listening. They can see it in our body language and they can tell when we're intent on listening that what they are saying is important to us. Now, one of the first techniques to use to not only understand better, but to tell the other person that we're actively listening is mimic back the content that they're putting out. Just repeat back what they've said. What I hear you saying is that you want to go to dinner first, then go to the airport. See, when you do that, you're letting that other person know that you're actively listening and what they said was important enough to you that you really heard what they were saying. Number one, it does something else when the other person, the first thing that they hear out of your mouth is not your thoughts, but their words back to them. They feel heard and it gives them the opportunity to know exactly what they said because sometimes people have ideas in their mind and what they say out of their mouth is something totally different. So it lets them know exactly what came out of their mouth and that you heard. Uh, it gives them the opportunity now to to rephrase or reiterate what they actually meant because now they may hear back something they did not intend to say. So when you mimic back what they said back to them, they're put on notice, oh, that's not really what I meant. Or they can affirm to you that's what I meant. And then they already 
And they feel good because they know you've heard them. That's active listening. It's very simple, not always easy to do because we have to be intentionally paying attention. You notice waiters and waitresses do this. They actually listen to us and hear us. The, um, isn't it amazing that some of these waiters and waitresses can take five, six, seven orders and never write it down, and yet your food comes back exactly the way you ordered it? They are actively listening to you. They are focused on what you are saying. And sometimes they'll even repeat it back. They kind of do a Stephen Covey back to us. They're seeking first to understand, then to be understood. But waiters and waitresses, and next time you go out to a place, just focus on how much they are actively listening to what you're saying. And they do a great job in, in, in hearing people speak and understanding what they're saying. We're always communicating, whether we're talking or not. We are always communicating. They say 70% of communication is nonverbal which seems kind of weird, doesn't it? It seems like the words are more important. That's what real communication is about, what we're actually saying. But our body language says so much more. And that's why when we repeat back to people what they've said, our body language is telling that person that we're actually listening. Our intention of hearing tells them by our body language, by us leaning into them, by nodding, even the way we talk when we repeat what they said, that tells them about communication. And so everybody is always communicating, no matter what. We're always communicating something. So that's why when you repeat back to somebody what they said, even though they may not be intently doing it, they're, they're, they're reading our body language. Now Stephen Covey, he tells a story. He tells a story in his in his book where he's on a subway train. I think it's a subway car. It's a, it's a train car. And there's a man in the car and, he, and there's two kids running around and they're raising havoc. These kids are yelling and screaming, running all over the place, throwing stuff. And Stephen and Covey is thinking to himself, this, this dad needs to take control of these kids. And he says something to the dad about the kids uh, probably should be reined in or he makes a comment to this man, and the man says to him, yes, I really need to take them under control. It's just, we just left the hospital and their mother died today, and I don't know, really know how to deal with that, and I don't think they do either. And it sent a message to Stephen Covey that we, we never know what somebody else is going through. So a lot of times, and I find myself doing it, we see people doing things or acting in a certain way, and we immediately make a judgment on that. And now I try to actively tell myself, I self-talk myself and say, we don't always know what people are going through. You know, maybe they had someone in their family die or something tragic happened to them. There's, there may be a reason beyond my, beyond my comprehension as to what is going on in that other person's life. And, that, and that's all part of seeking first to understand, then to be understood. Because sometimes we get it wrong. When I was first developing my people skills and making the turnaround in personal development, self-improvement, I found myself, when I first started employing this, seek first to understand, then to be understood. It really helped me because I was, what you would say, mind reading. Right? I was putting thoughts in other people's head. I was thinking, oh, that person thinks this or that person thinks that. I was a deputy sheriff working out of the Temple Sheriff Station, Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. I was on patrol and I had one sergeant. Every time I submitted a report, he would send that back for corrections. Every single time. It could be the simplest of reports. And when you write reports, Police reports, you're really writing on a fifth grade level. You're, 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 you're told to simplify your language so that it could be easily understood by anybody uh, who could read, 
could easily understand what you are trying to say in the story of your of your report. And I, and I was thinking to myself, no one else is sending my report. This guy is sending my reports back. So now I started mind reading. This guy hates me. This guy does not like me. He just wants to give me a hard time every single time I submit a report. He just looks for any reason to kick back, kick back my report. And so, I mean, I was, I was feeling anger about this, uh, even off duty. And you know, when you do that, when you're feeling anger, hatred, frustration towards someone else, or you put the thought in their head, that person hates me, you're feeling those emotions. You're feeling the hatred. You're feeling the frustration. They're not feeling it. And those negative emotions and thoughts are affecting you physically and or mentally, not them. So you have to stop doing that. And I started doing that. I stopped doing that. I started focusing on seeking first to understand, then to be understood. So I had to stop this uh, monologue in my head. This guy hates me. This guy's out to get me. He just wants to send my reports back to give me a hard time. And I had to drop feeling those negative emotions and focus on the positive. And I wanted to understand where this sergeant was coming from. And I'm glad I did it. I mean, it really, not only did it change my thinking, but every time you get one of these personal growth, self-improvement tools uh, to help you lead a better life, put it into practice right away. And for me, I was able to do that right away when I worked for the Sheriff's Department every day in every way. I was putting that into practice with my supervisors, my fellow deputies, people I was dealing with uh, on the street in patrol. I could start actively doing these things and getting feedback of, of how it was going. And when you, st- when you start getting better in communicating, it, it's not just at work, it's at home. It's not just with the people you work with. No, it's your family, it's your friends, it's your neighbor. Personal growth is the greatest gift you can give everybody else. So here's how I... I, I I want to try to understand where this sergeant's coming from. So I'm going to drop putting words and thoughts in his mind that I don't know if they're there or not. These are my delusions. And so I was on patrol. I'm in my police car, and he was the field sergeant this particular time. The sergeant's on a shift. There would be a desk sergeant who would go over the reports and or ask for corrections, kick him back like this guy would normally do with me every single time. And then there's a field sergeant who would roll to calls with the deputies out in the field. And sometimes they would take reports too and correct them in the field so that when you came in at the end of your shift, your reports were already approved. You wouldn't have to wait for the desk sergeant to get to your report, which could take quite some time if there was a lot of reports piled up. So I sent a message over my MDT, my mobile digital terminal, our our computers and our cars, And I sent a message to that sergeant. I asked him if he would meet me for a bite to eat. I was going to start with coffee, but I decided, why you want to meet me for a bite to eat? And I thought maybe his response would be, as I'm trying to put thoughts in his head again, "Uh, no, can't make it, or, you know. No, he said, sure, name it. So I named the location. We went inside. We sat down at a place to have our have our meal, our dinner. Me and the sergeant and I started talking to him and I started seeking first to understand. So I was actively listening to what he was saying, repeating things back to him, letting him know that I was actively listening to him. And by doing that, I found that we had a lot in common. One of the first things that I found out was that this guy had a master's degree and that he was an English major And that was his thing. Grammar, writing, English, that was his passion. So when he was finding, he was finding errors in my report. There were actual errors, number one. Number two, he was on a, he was on a different level than most people when it comes to uh, grammar and composition of the English language in a written report. This guy was an English major. This was his thing. This was his expertise. So when he was kicking back my reports for actual errors, he was doing that because that's what he 
immediately recognize was an error in the English language and the way that it was written. There was nothing personal towards me whatsoever. I put that in my own head and that affected me in a negative way and I was the author of that negativity. And so I stopped doing that and here I am meeting with this sergeant and now I'm understanding and I also found out he's an avid fisherman. He loved to fish. I found out where he went. He knew where our island was in upstate New York in the Thousand Islands. He knew that location. We talked about freshwater fishing, largemouth, smallmouth, bass, where some of the, we, he explained to me some of the places that he went to go fishing. We had a personal conversation. We, we developed rapport with each other. We got to a certain level of bonding and communication that from that day forward was totally different. And so I have to say, if you can employ that fifth habit, seek first to understand, then to be understood, it's going to make a big difference in your life in communication. And that's the problem with any relationship that goes sour in any way or doesn't develop the way it could. It's always communication. It's always has to do with listening and effective communication. Now, granted, when you first start doing this and you get better each and every time that you start employing this, you start to become a better communicator. You start to read people's body language better. You start to more quickly understand what someone's trying to communicate to you. You're going to get really good at seeking to understand before you understood. But now you have to remember some people that you talk to will not be good at that. And so you can't judge them for it or get frustrated with it, that they're not communicating at your level because you're going to easily recognize now when they're passively listening, where they're maybe ignoring, maybe they are nodding their head, but they're really not listening you may start to realize through their body language that they're trying to formulate a response for their time to speak without listening to actually what you're saying. And you may have to adjust your communication. You may have to reiterate, listen, what I'm trying to say to you is this, and I want to make sure you understand it. You may have to adjust to the person who's not empathic, and or actively listening to you the way you are actively listening to them. So be conscious of that when you start employing this and you start getting really good at it because you will. You're going to get really good at this fifth habit by Stephen Covey. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. Get the book by Stephen Covey. You won't go wrong in reading that. And I hope you start doing this today. It'll make a big difference in your life. Hey, as always, I love you. I'm glad you're here. Please. Leave comments. I love your comments. You're awesome. You have a great life.